Hello everyone. This video is going to be about how to change underlays in your different lettering sets. You will have to have a new version 3.6.6 to do this functionality. If you do not have that version, it's not available to you. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw just a simple graphic that we can use to do some fonts. So we're going to choose a font. Um, let's just do Arial Regular. You should have that already on your system. Um, so we're just going to go um, underlay. Just let's say under. Okay. And we're going to use it to fit the line. So it's fairly large. We're going to go in here and look at this. So as a default, what comes up is the normal underlay that was in the previous lettering sets. I'm going to set the spacing a little bigger so we can see kind of between the letters. I'll just set this to 20. Okay, so you can see that the underlay kind of has a zigzag pattern. Um, although it's not really um, quite the zigzag that you would expect, it's kind of more what's called a satin where we have a parallel line and then a zigzag. Um, in earlier versions, that was all that satin could do, and the underlays in this particular lettering set is based off of the old um, satin functionality. But now we have different underlay types. You can see it's set to original. Now if I go to single, you'll see that it's just a running stitch going down the letters. Um, and this might be really useful if you're trying to do a very small lettering set. You know, you've made the size very small, so let's say I'm going to change the fit to line to false, and I'm just going to make this, let's say, a eighth inch, which is about 125, 0.125. You'll see that, if we look at this closely, you'll see that there's running stitches under here. Now, see how the running stitches actually, their lengths are too long to make this a good um, small font. Um, the, the zigs or the, the satin stitches look like they would work, but the running stitches are way too small. So what you can do with the running stitches is you can change them by actually changing the running stitch length to let's say five. Okay, that didn't do what I wanted to do. Um, underlay spacing, we'll change it to five here. And uh, this one actually changes, okay, just to explain, um, some of these uh, lettering sets have pathing stitches that go from, let's say, one section to another. Those aren't really underlay. Those are just the stitches that um, take the lettering in a certain direction, and running stitch length affects that. And underlay spacing, which is the actual spacing for the built-in underlay, is five. So you have to change both of these numbers to five to get it down to a small uh, stitch length. You can see that this now um, fits within the letter. And so when we type, when we run the letter, you can see how it would stitch out. Um, I've never stitched this small um, with this particular lettering set at an eighth inch high. I don't know if this would work out, but um, I would be interested to find out if you guys try it out, um, what you find. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go back to fit to line back to the big size here okay and we'll change the running stitch uh, length back to what it was before 15 and then uh, the spacing underlay spacing to 15 okay um, so that's the running stitch if we go to a zigzag traditional zigzag you'll see that now instead of having the satin type of zigzag which is a parallel and then an angle, a parallel an angle, like it is for the top stitches, you'll see that's truly now a zigzag. And you'll notice that the zigzag is offset from the edge of the lettering set. And what that control is controlled by, by the underlay offset. So if I change this to a smaller number, like one, you can see it almost goes to the edge. Uh, typically four is a good number because uh, thread typically is about four tenths of a millimeter in diameter, so that's why that's chosen. And then the underlay spacing, again, changes how much 
how close the spacing is of the zigzag. So if I change it to smaller, um, you can see that there's more zigzag there. Um, so 15 C or 20, 20 seems to work pretty good for most cases. You can play around with that and try it out. Okay, so there's other types of things. There's a double zigzag where it'll go both ways. And then there is an edge walk, which is walks along the edge of the lettering sets. What, that, what the edge walk helps do is keep the satins from being pulled together. So it's kind of a pull compensator um, or prevents pull from happening. You can do edge walk with, with zigzag and you can do edge walk with double zigzag. So play around with these different types, depending on what kind of size lettering you want to do, and you'll be able to uh, see what effects it has. Um, what I found in general is the edge walk kind of keeps the lettering a little more straight because it has an edge to pull against. And so um, edge walk seems to be something you want to do for some of these lettering sets.